Okay, I'm pretty sure we're live. <laughs> Hopefully my team will jump on and tell me if we are or aren't live. Um, if you are watching this, make sure to tell us hello. I'm Jamie Trull. Most of you know me, Jamie Trell, CPA, financial literacy coach, and profit strategist. I have missed you. I haven't done a live in, this is probably one of the, I, this is, I think, the longest time frame I have gone without doing a live. So I miss everybody. So I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to have my special guest today who I will introduce in just a minute. I'm just waiting for everybody to jump on. Currently, we are live on my YouTube channel, Jamie Trull. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> um, uh, we are live in my Financial Literacy for Women Business Owners Facebook group and on my Facebook page. So wherever you are watching us from, say hello. I see Joyce in here. Okay, I'm seeing some people join. So that, that always makes me feel better that we are actually <laughs> truly live and that people can see us. So as many of these as, as I do, I feel like I still get worried about the tech because you never know what Facebook is going to do uh, at all. So this morning, I'm so excited to have one of my esteemed preferred vendors, April Miller, yay, mm -hmm. um, who is the CEO. Do you, what, do you call yourself CEO? I should have asked you that. I kind of call myself owner. or Owner, I mean... owner, okay. Owner, owner and CEO. Claim that CEO, all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, of sand dollar bookkeeping. And so we are gonna start talking about, cause we're in December, y'all, it's December 15th. It's the middle of December. We can officially say it's in the middle of December. And I'm sure everybody's got, you know, 2022 on the brain already. I think we're already kind of in that, the ship has sailed for this year, which, you know, for the most part, my kids are gonna be home starting next week. The, the ship has sailed. <laughs> the ship has sailed on 2022 or 2021. I'm still trying to get a few things in, but ultimately, you know, not a whole heck of a lot that's going to happen between now and then. But I know we all come back in January ready to go, right? We're ready to go. We have a list a mile long of the things that we want to do. And I think on that list for many of you who are business owners is probably, okay, this is going to be the year. This is going to be the year that I'm going to get my finances sorted out and I'm going to have processes that it's, that I'm not going to be scrambling, mm -hmm. right? Um, we, we declare that. So if that's you, I want you to declare it. I want you to say, this is the year and April's going to give you some of the best practices today for what you can do starting right away to start implementing some change because we know we're motivated in January to implement those changes. So what do we need to do? So April, um, let's, let me just intro you as well. April, like I said, is one of my preferred vendors. Many of you know a lot of my preferred vendors. She is one of our bookkeepers. She helps people with both you know, ongoing bookkeeping needs, right? But also if you are someone DIYing your bookkeeping and need occasional help, April offers that too, right, April? Yes, that's one of my favorite services, actually. Yeah, it's hard to find sometimes bookkeepers who are willing to do that. A lot of them want you to sign up for monthly retainers. But I love the fact that if you run into a snag, if you're trying to figure out how to reconcile your accounts or something's gone wrong, right? All of a sudden you're like, why is all my income doubled? I'm so confused. You can book a call with April, get it sorted out, get it done and dusted in one quick call. So I love that you offer that, April. I think that's such a value add for people who are kind of in that middle ground between like full DIY, right? and when they are ready to fully outsource it to a bookkeeper. So maybe you're knees deep in YouTube videos and you're like, I just need to talk to a person, <laughs> <laughs> right? That is something that April can help you with as well. So April, tell me a little bit about yourself, number one, and then we're going to jump into some tips that you have for what people can do when they say, okay, 2022 is the year. I'm going to get things sorted out. It's going to be better next year. All right. So I'm April Miller. Um, I'm the owner of Sand Dollar Bookkeeping. Um, I'm based out of Florida, but I have clients all across the country. Um, the biggest problem of that sometimes is only the time zone is mm -hmm. figuring that out with my West Coast clients. Other than that, I love ser serving clients all across the country. Um, I have a great little team. Um, my clients are all across the board. There is not a certain kind of industry they are in per se. And I do everything or we do everything from bookkeeping, DIY help, advisory services. I have a lot of clients that are I do more controller level work for, or maybe just month end reconciliations and reviews. So kind of everything. I don't have a one size fits all because I find that each business is very unique and possibly what they need um, and what services I can provide for them. And I try to mold that for them when I talk to them. Yeah. To, to see how I can better serve them. Hi, Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll put them up. 
Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. I'm seeing some good mornings. We got have some other esteemed preferred vendors with us yes. this morning as well. Um, that's great. Hi, Jocelyn. Hi, Joyce. Hi, everybody. Um, okay, so that's great. So then I love, I love that. I love that you are kind of one of those people who's just like, no, I think the um what I'll say is in the industry, and I was even on a QuickBooks consulting thing, and they were talking a lot about, you know, pro I I, I never say this word right, y'all. I never say it right. Don't don't laugh at me. Processizing, processizing, kind of like systematizing, right? But forming a process. But what they, uh, no, productizing. That's what I'm looking for. Sorry. Productizing, meaning like basically they're telling accountants, bookkeepers, like create one thing and, and just sell that, right? And the truth of the matter is that that one thing doesn't fit with every different business, right? And so even businesses within the same field, are going to need personalization. They need different things. You are a different business owner than somebody else's. And so I love the fact that you take that personalized approach, that it's not trying to fit like square peg round hole, right? You personalize what you provide based on the type of business, I'm sure, but also the business owner's needs themselves, right? Where, where are their blind spots? What are the things that they really want help with? Um, so I love that. Blair agrees. I'm guessing Blair is is a is a client. Blair is a client. She has two businesses. So oh, yes. Nice. And and you know, just like you just said, I have I have um three different insurance companies. Yeah. And outside of them just being female-owned businesses, their each one of their business is completely unique in how they function and process and the workflows. Yep. Um, so you're exactly right. I try not to fit them all into a standard little box yeah. for their services and what they need because they each require different things. Yeah. Um, and they they each have their own uh, you know strengths that really that they can do they can know their own numbers and that I can I can help with on their weaknesses. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's so so valuable. Okay, so let's talk about January, y'all. We are what 16, 16 ish days, <laughs> seventeen. I don't know how you count it. Uh, away from January first of twenty twenty two. Now, first of all, I don't want anybody here claiming twenty twenty two is their year. All right, like none of y'all are claiming that. That <laughs> doesn't work. Okay, <laughs> we're all we're just gonna tiptoe into twenty twenty two and not, try not to break anything. But you can claim that it's your year to clean up your finances specifically. So, what's the first thing that the first piece of advice that you would give people that are in that boat where they're like, I'm a mess. Okay. I gotta so fix for, first of all, you know, we all talk about goals. We all have business goals. And then we all make these, we make these resolutions, right? We make personal resolutions. Yep. We're going to get in shape. We're going to eat better. And that, that's all great. But how about a resolution for your business? You know, you're making goals for your business. So call it a resolution. And what do we do with resolutions? We start in January, mm -hmm. right? That is the only way it works is if we start right in the beginning of the year. So that is what I'm going to say. If you know that your bookkeeping and your financials and your records and just your business numbers, your accounting procedures as a whole has just, it needs to be better. Maybe, maybe it's okay, but you know, it needs to be better. Start in January, um, make it a goal to do that and make it a resolution for your business to start in January. Don't wait until February. Don't because that's when things get behind. And that's when we're like, okay, well, I'm already a month behind. I'm already, you know, it's so much easier if you start in the beginning of the year. Um, whether or not you use QuickBooks Online or a different program. I personally love QuickBooks Online. I will tell you, I'm a desktop user since 2004, and I never thought the day would come that I would say that I prefer QuickBooks Online. But Yay, you're a convert. <laughs> I 100% converted. So if you are not using QuickBooks Online yet, you know, Jamie has the best deal on that. So go to her website and look at QuickBooks Online. Why do I love QuickBooks Online? Um, the integrations, okay? And, and that's what I talk about. Um, keeping it all in one place. It's user-friendly. It's fully integrated. You can integrate with your payment processor. Um, if you use, you know, Stripe or Square or what or whatever, it just makes it a lot easier. Um, I, I do have one major tip, and that is I don't I always like to say don't think of your financials though as a crock pot. Like it's great to integrate everything, but you still have to review it. Um, I've seen clients where everything's fully integrated and it's almost like it's just on autopilot. And that's mm -hmm. how things can go awry, right? Technology is mm -hmm. great when it works. 
Um, but if it doesn't work, it can create a big mess. Yeah. So that is, I, I love QuickBooks Online. I love the receipt manager, which I don't think is used enough. Yeah. Um, the QuickBooks Online receipt manager to keep those pesky receipts organized. You don't have to keep the paper and then you can export them at the end of the year. I actually, that was one of my last tips I just did in Jamie's group is how to export all of those attachments that you may have in QuickBooks Online for safekeeping. Yeah. Um, so that's my first thing is start in January. If you yeah. don't know what to do, find a bookkeeper, somebody like me or another preferred vendor or somebody interview someone you're comfortable with and design a process and workflow that's best for your business. And I think one thing I wanna point out because a lot of times people roll into January and rather than thinking about, especially finance related, right? Rather than thinking about like, how do I make things better for 2022? We're like, how the heck do I fix what the heck I have done in 2021 or maybe even before that, right? So. I think that that is sometimes where we're like scrambling to get things ready for, for taxes. And we're trying to like piece things together and duct tape it to give it to our tax preparer instead of thinking about, hey, maybe this is a good time to fix my systems. And truly, if you spend the time to fix your systems, at the same time, it's going to help you with last year too, mm -hmm. right? So you can try to duct tape and put it and like, you know, like Franken tax it together. <laughs> Come up with a Franken PL. You can absolutely do that. I'm going to trademark that Franken PL. I like it. Um, <laughs> or you can say, okay, we're going to put the effort instead into fixing my systems so that not only can I help myself for last year and make things better, but I can also now have a system that works and not continually be in this spot. Right. So I think that is, <laughs> sorry, Blair. <laughs> Did Blair have a Franken PL before? No, I keep Blair. I keep Blair on track. She, she I know. I know. Well, I'm sure. I have systems. We keep we keep her on the straight and narrow. Yeah, I'm sure. Like maybe she had a Franken PL before she was on April. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but that's that's what we tend to do. So I would put that effort instead into figuring out like how do I make this better for the longer term, right? Again, it's it's that effort of like okay, I could put X amount of effort into trying to like put the fix this like, you know, just kind of piece it together. Or I could take that effort and maybe it's a little bit more effort, right? It's going to be a little bit more effort probably to come up with those systems and processes and things that you need to do. But once you do it, in the end, it's going to save you time. It's going to save you errors and it's going to save you money. Like that's the thing I think people forget about bookkeeping is that if you don't know what you're doing and if you have issues, that can actually cost you money. I don't think anybody wants Uncle Sam taking more of their money than needs to happen, right? Oh, Jamie, I did a good sense and clarity call with the DIYer um, uh, just a couple months ago. And I think I found it was like $40,000 in overstated income just from 2021 oh my God, yeah. because they just did not know the processes within receiving payments, how to do transfers properly within yep. QuickBooks Online. Um, so right there, I mean, that paid for the call instantly. I can't um, tell you how many people like that is one of the most common issues that I, I saw back when, back when I was a little bit, I never was like full on, you know, into bookkeeping, but I did some, some light bookkeeping for some people. And that was the biggest issue that I saw was like this double income, which means you're paying double taxes. And I don't think anybody wants to pay double taxes, but it is a very common problem. And all it is, is how your systems are set up and how you are handling those transactions. And if you don't really know what you're doing and you're just kind of trying to press some buttons and, you know, okay, I've cleared everything, but now, you know, is this actually correct? Right. And I think that's the other thing. And you touched on this too, right. When, when, um, a lot of what comes out of your systems is based on how how they're set up, right? Like, so how you have things integrating in with your systems and making sure that it's set up properly. That's key. Because if you set up QuickBooks, but you do it wrong, then you're going to have a whole host of issues that are going to come out on the other end, which I think is why like any all of these accounting softwares can get a bad name, but it's because they weren't set up properly to begin with. Set up properly, if you know what you're doing and can keep up with it, it's much easier to get what you need out of it. Would you Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I've, I've said this many times. I said that QuickBooks Online, is, it's almost like a toddler. Yeah. Like you have to teach it how to do things. Like when the bank feeds come over, 
it thinks it may know where something goes. And if you're just like, oh, well, it's, I, it told me that it should go here. And you're just add, 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 which if Courtney hates that, right? Courtney hates adding yes. transactions. They already, need to, one of our in, other they already need to be in the, in the preferred account. vendors. Yeah. So you have to teach it and you teach it and it's an algorithm. And once it starts to see how you're doing things in the system, it will remember just like a toddler, but yeah. you have to tell it over and over. But if you tell um, it the wrong thing, <laughs> if you tell it the wrong thing, it's going to do the wrong thing yep. over and over. And that's how you end up with overstated income yep. or understated expenses or whatever it may be. Um, and that kind of goes to like one of my next tips, you know, which is how you have to reconcile your accounts monthly. If you are going to do better and you are going to make this resolution, you must reconcile. If that is not for you. You need to outsource that. I now, have a lot of clients who they do the bookkeeping themselves. They do yeah. the monthly entries, but I come in or my team comes in at the end of the month. We do the reconciliations. We do the month in review. Any any questions they have during the month? Because everyone, it you are not done. When that little difference hits zero and you think you're done, if you still have a lot of transactions left over sitting from prior periods or the current periods, guess what? that's how you end up with overstated or understated issues. Yes. And, and, and I see it all the time. So that's why it's nice to have that second set of advisory eyes to look at that. So let's talk about what it means. Cause I think that there are a lot of people that don't reconcile their accounts, right? Maybe they don't even know what that exactly means. They've heard of it, but they're like, Okay, so what what is this? So let's talk about like, what does it mean to reconcile your, your accounts and why is that important? Okay, so at the end of the month, when you get your bank statement and you go into QuickBooks or whatever it is, reconciling your state, reconciling your statements, your credit cards, not just your bank statements, your credit cards, your business credit cards, because we are not combining business and personal in 2022, everyone. Nope. We are not doing that. Everybody <laughs> shake their head. <laughs> Um, so you're taking your statements and you're going in and you are accounting for all the transactions that you have written during yeah. the month. And you are making sure that everything is accounted for what has cleared the bank. And it is giving you your actual cash balance for the month to make sure that everything is properly accounted for. Yeah. Um, bank reconciliations are not just adding to the bank feeds. So if you're like, well, no, I have, I reconcile, I use the bank feeds. Yeah. That is not reconciling. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do it monthly. And you the hard part is, is that you can't just decide if you've never reconciled, you can't just decide, well, this month I'm going to start. I'm yeah. going to do it this month moving forward. You have to do all of the historical reconciliations to catch yes. up. That's very, very true. And that's the hardest thing. If you wait a long time to do your reconciliations, you know, and that's where there have been, I, I'm going to admit something. Nobody judge me. I'm going to admit something. There have been times when I've not done my reconciliations monthly. <laughs> there have been times where I'm like, oh man. And so I will go in and I'm like, okay, I got to reconcile. And so I try to do like three months at a time. And then I'm like, okay, there's a problem. And <laughs> now what I have to do is figure out like, okay, which month did this problem happen in? Was it the first month? Was it the second month? And then I have to go back and really do them on a monthly basis anyway to figure out where my problem is. So I didn't actually save myself any time. I in fact made it harder on myself. And I do that and I still like, I'm pretty good with processes, but there are times when things get crazy. I mean, last year, psh, I don't even know. I don't even know. I, I think I waited like four or five months before doing reconciliations. It was a terrible idea. I learned my lesson. Um, I will not do it again. I promise, April. But that, but that is something like the great thing about reconciliations as an accountant, I love them. Why? Because they tell you when there's a problem. Yes. Otherwise, you yes. may not realize it. You may not have any idea there's a problem. But if your bank reconciliation is out, something else is out too. There's a there, you know, maybe it's another bank account, but maybe it's something on your PL. So that's the thing like that is so important to know is that if your bank account is not reconciling, or if you can reconcile it, but there's a whole bunch of transactions that you're leaving out in order to reconcile it, right? Somewhere else in your financial statements, possibly on your balance sheet too, but potentially on your PL, which is a problem, there is something wrong. Right. And so that it's a great indicator. It doesn't necessarily solve the problem for you. Right. But it'll tell you there's a problem. And that's a great time to be like, 
okay, I need to call up April. <laughs> Absolutely. That's where issues flush themselves out. Yeah. And that's what I always say. If I look, if I'm doing an initial review of books and I can tell they haven't First been reconciled in seven yeah. months and somebody's like, well, what's wrong with them? And I'm like, I don't know just yet, mm -hmm. but once we go through the reconciliations, they're going to come out. It's going to stick out. And yep. usually 50% of the time, a lot of the problems I see are integrations with third party programs mm -hmm. where they're coming over, the income's being booked automatically, but QuickBooks is hitting it in undeposited funds. Transfers are being booked incorrectly. And all of this stuff has to be unwound, basically untangled yeah. and then corrected. Yep. And it can take time no. if you haven't done it all year. If you're starting month by month, then it's easy to find those things and fix it right then. Yes. So that's why I'm, you know, reconcile monthly or have yep. somebody else do it for you. Yeah, absolutely. If that's not your thing, then definitely have somebody else do it for you. But it is so, so important. You will find things long in advance and you won't create more problems, right? If you just keep letting it go, you're probably like we talked about it's toddler, toddler's going to keep doing that, kind of keep making the problem worse and worse and worse. And if you don't even know there's a problem, then it's going to, then you're going to get to the end of the year and be like, whoa, I, it's telling me I made twice what I made and that's not right. <laughs> but I have no idea what went wrong. And you're so, yeah, you're so right. Oftentimes it is related to how these third party things are set up. So again, it goes back to setup. It goes back to how everything's set up. And I think that's what's so useful about working with somebody to make sure you are doing it right. Even if you don't work with that person continually, right? Even if it's just working with someone to get it set up or get it fixed, get your process fixed again, January is a great time to do that. Um, or it's talking with somebody, you know, having a clarity call, let's say with April, sometime during the year when, you know, your reconciliations aren't working and you need some, a second pair of eyes who can probably find it a lot faster than you. And I will tell you, do not, uh, do not be the person that hasn't done any of this. And you're trying to do it all in January, February, getting everything together for taxes. And you are spending an obscene amount of hours and wanting to throw your computer out the window. I <sighs> I know what that feels like, but because it's not your skill set, right? Like that's not probably not the thing that you have honed. You probably have not gone through a QuickBooks Pro Advisor course. You probably have not been doing this for years and years. And so the idea that you're going to be able to find this needle in the haystack, it's not it, somebody else who has the eyes, who looks at these things all the time can find those problems so much faster than you burning that. Wouldn't you say, April? Absolutely. I mean, I'm an elite pro advisor. Um, my team, everybody on my team is a pro advisor. Yeah. Um, we see the majority of, we know what the issues are because we yeah. see them time and time again. It's Just only like a handful whatever, of whatever it is you yeah. do in your business, you do it well. You know what issues there are or, or exactly. what comes about. And it, it's the same thing. And it is an investment because we can solve those problems for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So with that then, because I think we, I think we touched on most of it. Mm -hmm. I think your other point was keeping business and personal separate, which we talked about and we raised our right hand that we're not going to, we're not going to commingle all that. We're going to keep everything separated. If you don't have that business bank account, or if you're inconsistently using it, this is a really good time in the next two weeks of this year, maybe go switch everything over. Like this is a great time so that by January 1st, everything, every business expense is coming out of your business account. Every, every personal thing is in your personal account, right? You don't have this weirdness that's causing you issues continually. Fix it January 1st, right, April? Yep. And then I have, um, I have holiday presents for all of you. Hey, so presents. You subscribe, I love presents. Subscribe. I have some amazing resources, a freebie library that literally is going to help you with your business, with your business finances. I have an end of the year bookkeeping checklist, five common QuickBooks online mistakes, which some of them we went over, those transfers, those yep. integrations, those quirky things. Um, I have a profit, uh, 12 ways to increase your profit margin, some bookkeeping myths. And then my last one, which I just added was a 1099 um, decision tree, which is love very it. helpful. I love a decision um, tree. So we, need, we all need that right now. They've changed <laughs> They changed the rules last year, confused us all. I think we all got it now, but they're going to change it again next year, probably. Yep. So, um, so that is my holiday gift to everyone. Please subscribe and get your freebie library. <laughs> I love free things. And then how, if they want to work with you, if they want to take it to the next step, April, what's the best thing for them? Well, tell them first, what do you offer? And okay, then so how I do offer, we get in touch with you? I offer everything from full service bookkeeping to, you know, just month end um, 
or just to reconciliations, which I call those check-ins. And I also have some that I just do quarterly check-ins for. And then you also have the option to book on demand, which can be booked right on my website under book a call. Um, a good sense and clarity call. That's the 45 minute session that's done only with me and the tune up session as well, which is in your file, going over questions you have if you're a DIYer. Yeah. And sometimes that's a really great way to lead into future services because I can look at the file and be like, okay, you, you do really need help or, hey, you know, you're doing a fantastic job. Here's just some suggestions. You can fix this moving forward. And I have a lot of clients, especially from Jamie's group, who use that service and they book it every quarter or once every 60 to 90 days. And then I, I have some that convert over to full uh, bookkeeping clients, which is great because I really know the business after after a while. I've worked with them. I you know, we know each other well. Um, so, so those are the services I do. I also do controller level advisory services. So whatever really you need for your business, it's possible that we can be a good fit. Um, most of my clients are service-based. I do have some product-based businesses. Um, and I, and if, if anybody's a profit first, uh, person, um, I would definitely refer you to, uh, Christina. Yeah. Yes. So yes, that's a good point. We also have, we have other preferred vendors as well that you can look at to make sure it's the best fit. Um, she's talking about Christina Springstead, who is a profit first professional as well. So if you're doing uh, the profit first, which is a book and a method of cash management, Christina would be a good fit. But if all that we're talking about here with helping with QuickBooks, whether you want to have her do that, just do everything or just help you with the things that you most need help with. I, I just, I adore the fact that there is that middle ground because it is hard to find. It is really hard to find. I think a lot of bookkeepers just want those monthly ongoing clients that are higher dollar amounts. And I love the fact that you meet people where they are, you give them help with what they need and they don't have to sign up for a recurring, you know, um, uh, thing that might not make sense for their business right now or where they're at. So I just love what you offer. I know we get so much great feedback about you, April, including, you know, Blair, who's here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so everybody make sure that you go grab, like I said, there's there's a couple things here. Actually, I think this this link will get them everything. So this link will show them, will direct them to the freebie library. You can also book a call through here, or you can find her on our preferred vendors list and book a call through there. Um, but we love April. We love April here. She is a preferred vendor for a reason. Um, we love the way that you take a, you know, we, we are very big on non-judgmental non teaching vendors. These are not going to be the vendors who you might have had experience with before that maybe are a little judgy or maybe talk in like crazy jargon that you're like, no, tell me what you really mean here, <laughs> right? That's that's the, the type of people that we've really looked to procure for this list for you guys. They're fully vetted by me. They are, April's a friend. So that's what I love. Um, about being able to put our preferred vendors in front of you because I know them and I trust them and um, you guys should too. And here's some preferred vendor love as well from Murray. Hi, Murray. If you need a financial planner, she's also on our preferred vendors list. So now is a great time. We actually get a lot of people that are hitting up our preferred vendor list. Here, I'll find that too somewhere up here. I don't think I've put it down yet. Um, but we get a lot of people who are interested in our preferred vendors this time of year because we have bookkeepers, we have CPAs, we have EAs, um, we have financial planners, we have all the people that you need. We have virtual CFOs, we have all the people that you need for your business needs right now. Um, make sure, oh, Crystal's here. I, I'm taking Crystal's job right now, y'all. I'm just, <laughs> I got in the zone. Sorry, Crystal, I'll step off. I'm sharing all the links. Um, Anyway, so definitely check that out. I'm so glad that you joined us. Um, apparently she sends yummy Christmas gifts, so that's awesome. <laughs> if you were on the fence, I feel like that should uh, that should move you. Um, okay, guys, y'all are amazing. We will be back probably in the new year. I don't think I'm, I've got any lives planned the next two weeks because I'm going to be in um, hanging out with the fam and probably drinking some wine, hanging by the fire, watching a lot of Christmas movies. That is really my plan over the next two weeks. And so I will be back in the new year though, with lots of great content. So as you jump into that January, make sure that you stay in touch with what's going on. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. If you're watching this 
in my financial literacy uh, Facebook group. Make sure you're paying attention because we've got lots of new content coming out, lots of new fun things that we are going to be doing to help support you and in, in your uh, goals to really get your finances under control in 2022. So I love y'all. You are amazing. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.